Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back for yet another episode. Nikki Meets, you are smiling ear to ear right now. I'm Robbie Berger. That's Nick Cassano. This is indeed the Pantry Boys. You love food. We love food. We love talking food. And we hope you folks love hearing about food. Nikki Meets, say hello to the folks. I'm just smi- First of all, hello, everybody. Uh, Nikki Meets here. Um, I'm just smiling because... I just love it. Like, I just love this. I just love this show. Like every time we come on, every time we talk, every time we get in and we we start talking about food, it's just it's a wonderful thing for me. And it makes you immediately smile. As soon as you came on the Zoom call, you had a smile. Yeah, (laughs) it's great. Like, it makes you happy. You know what I will say, too? It is so easy to record. Like it just, easy. it's such oh, an easy thing. I've been on podcasts, even guests on podcasts. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth, man. Like yep. you're trying to, to, to figure out what you're trying to say. This is like, sometimes I, I, I even forget that like we're recording it. Like it just, it just flows so naturally. And, and, and it's great when you find people besides uh, you and I that, that speak the language. I think that's the goal of all podcasting. If you can get to a point where you don't even feel like you're recording, like you're running. I mean, that is like the pinnacle. Yeah. Spot that you want to be in with podcast. Yeah. And we were saying before, it's like when, when I don't have a question ready, you got one ready to go. Like, I like, like I could sense when you're about to say something versus when I'm about to say something and it just a, it, it really is a beautiful thing. And I'm so excited to be. I'm so excited that this uh, got rolling as, as well as it did. We appreciate the support. We appreciate all you pantry boys and girls out there. And the people are talking. The people okay. are talking. They, they always have been. And folks, welcome to the pantry. Um, you know, Meets, what I got to give you credit for before we get started here, I'm going to have you introduce our guest today because what you have done in bringing a lot of these guests on is – and I've said it to you before, you you have such a feel for people who speak our language. A guy we got coming on today, I definitely feel is going to speak the language. Talk to me about Paul Swan. Well, Paul Swan, I met. Well, first of all, thank you very much for that compliment. I take so, great pride in the people. I even I even got friends, and I, I think we should really consider doing a friends and family episode. And I want people to 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 comment on that. Shoot us in the DMs. Let us know what you think. Yeah. A friends and family episode, I think, would be great because I got some friends that speak the language just like you and me. Yeah, and even my sister's great. Shout out, uh, Karina. But um, Paul Swan. I met about a month ago in Charlotte, North Carolina, and within five minutes, I shit you not, within five minutes of meeting this guy, I'm like, this guy's unbelievable. He is he's a, a pantry boy. He's a gem. He not not only is he a pantry boy, not only does he speak the language, he's just a genuine, genuine dude, like a salt of the earth kind of dude. When you talk to him, you know you're getting the authenticity. The authentic. The fuck you say that word. Come on, keep it going. You're gonna keep the it going. authenticity out of him. Wow, look at, I didn't think yeah. you were gonna get a try. Yeah, no, two. I focused up. I clutched up and I did it. The Way authenticity out of him. You know, you know he's a real one. You know you can count on him. Um, and honestly, I was I was quite disappointed in myself that I didn't think of him soon. But yeah. we got Paul Swan coming on. He's a pit crew guy for Austin Dillon. For those of you who don't know what that means, in the sport of NASCAR, when the cars come in. And they take out the they take the wheels out and they put them on. And they send them right back. That's what he does. He is a brute. I think he's around six three, fucking huge. He's all tatted up. He's got great he's got looking tech, guy. By great the great looking guy. Yeah, you know what? Very underrated when it comes on. Like we had Tyler Cameron on, and I think that's what really set the bar. But but Paul Swan, you know, he's up there too. He's a good looking dude. He's a good looking dude. Very, very good look, very good looking dude. V- no very good looking dude. And he knows what he's talking about when he talks about food. I met his wife. His wife is phenomenal. It's just it 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 you, you think people like that are too good to be true, but the 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 most important thing for, for this episode is what he's gonna bring to the table when it comes to talking about energy. Food. Energy, energy and 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 the, the direction that he's gonna go. I'm excited to see. I know he's got I know he he's a foodie, I know. He, he speaks the language, so we're going to see here. We're going to find out. Let's bring on the big fella, and let's see what he's got to offer onto the pantry. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the pantry, we bring on 
Paul Swan. Let's, oh, yeah. Let's give a nice oh, yeah. warm round of applause oh, yeah. there for Sir Paul Swan. Give it to him now. Oh, yeah. Give it to yeah, him take now. A bow. Take a bow, baby. Take a Come bow. On, give us the bow, Swan. Yeah. yeah, there he is. Yeah. 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 Also, yeah. baby, boxing yeah. six. Oh, oh six. there he is. All right. This. Look All right. Look at this. Paul, do you have a tattoo of a ticket on, on, on your right bicep? Well, that's a good uh, eye right there, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a bit of a, it's a little bit of a double threat. You know, welcome to the gun show. Yeah. The main reason is tickets are like my thing. It's everything. I got a, I got a chain of it, too, but I don't have it on right Eats, now. He yeah. wears a jersey every single day just so that he can let just that so ticket show tattoo. everybody the ticket he's got his bicep. <laughs> let and it print- out. Credit to you, Paul, because I've been I've been using that admit one ticket emoji to everybody I come across. Everything. Literally, it's, it's unbelievable. It's such a great emoji. It's a great saying. I love it. How you doing, Paul? I'm great. I'm great, Paul, boys. Can, How you guys doing? Oh, can I ask you a question right out of the gate? Something that I just saw you do. We pay attention to details here, Paul. Yeah. I got a question. For I saw you. it too. Can I, I saw it you too. You saw what I saw, right? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ask see. You. Okay, you just took a sip of that liquid death water, okay? Yeah. There he is. There he is. Now, is he- I don't know if that's a sponsor or not, So, I, but I, I do want to put that on the table. I, I have had the liquid death mountain water. Yes. The water itself is spectacular, but do you find it different? To I, I just can't get behind drinking out of the water out of the can. So first off, not sponsored by him. I just love this stuff. It you is. Do. Incredible. I feel like I'm drinking from a damn glacier. Wow. <laughs> and wow. The, the whole aluminum deal, I think it's way better than the bottle. Like, I feel like I'm... You. Oh, you do? It's oh, you more do. of an experience. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Walk us through that. Walk us through that. So, the, I mean, it's cold all the time. It's like, you ever see Waterboy where, you know, he pulls out that glacial yeah. water? And yeah. Yeah. Him, <laughs> yeah. He yeah. says, you know, it's, it's always cold, you know? <laughs> you know I feel... This liquid death is, it's always cold. Yeah. It's just, it's an experience drinking from the aluminum versus, you know, this crappy plastic. You know? yeah, Essentia yeah. is a great water. Though. Essentia, Essentia is, is a great way. It's, it's, water. it's a great water. Nothing against Essentia. That is a high quality water, pH, yeah. all that level. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Paul but Swan the liquid called, death is where you're at. Call me crazy, yeah. Meats, but, but but Paul Swan has one hell of a water arsenal. Right? I mean, God, when, this is unbelievable. But, but Bob, I, I got the essential one hand, liquid death. I'm I, double. I tell you this. Wait, 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 let's get the thumbnail. Bring that shit back in here. Let's get the thumbnail real quick. Yeah. Everybody Put say those cheese up for the that. camera. Put them up. Say good cheese. thumbnail right here. awareness. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Very Beautiful. good thumbnail yeah, thank awareness. You. Thank you. Yeah, my, my thumbnail awareness is through the roof. And, <laughs> and you know, Bob, you tell me, look at the guy's water set up. I, I had this ability, Paul, to find people that speak our language. Yeah. I just know. And and it's no surprise that you got such a high quality water lineup because I know that you you speak the language. You pay attention to detail. Absolutely. And I think it's fantastic. So Paul, before we get into it, I want I wanna I wanna give you the time to tell everybody who you are, what you do, and and then we'll go right into we'll go right into the take. But I Absolutely. wanna give you that time to let the people know the kind of electric man you are. Absolutely. Well, Paul Swan, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Born in the Midwest, it. born and raised, baby. Played football at Bowling Green out in Ohio. Was a linebacker, was a, was quite a bit bigger back then. I was about 240 just you know, fucking ramming the oh. ramming ramming the shoulder pads down. Yeah, before we before we go any further, I would not want to be in, in, on the other end of the field, on the other end of the fucking line of scrimmage with a with a two hundred and forty five pound Paul Swan with an admit one tattoo on his. There, head. there's like also a no better bet than a Thursday night Bowling Green bet. Thursday uh, night, baby, you cannot beat the back. Uh, you're not going to find a better way no, here than that. No. <laughs> they almost What's call it free money. Night matching games. Yeah, but go ahead. But yeah, so you know, pl- plugging the A gap for five years, playing middle <laughs> linebacker, having a time out there. We won a MAC championship in 2013. Took down a took down 11th ranked NIU when they had Jordan Lynch. He was the Heisman hopeful. They wow. were- yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Did you light his ass up? Did you light him up like a Christmas tree? Buddy, first first tackle of the game was on him. Oh, yeah. You know what? I mean, mean, you make a good point. If you're a running back and you get the football and you're choosing your gap, 
the last gap you're going to pick is the I ain't guy picking there the A gap. Yeah. With the admit one with ticket admit for a tattoo is the oh, last you, hole oh. I'm going in. <laughs> I'm, I'm running. The, the objective is to run away, not to the end zone, to run away with from the guy with the admit one tattoo. And that happens to be Paul Swamp. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, no, I love you're, it. you're a gem. Um, so now what do you do? So uh, then I moved uh, uh, moved down to North Carolina to be a strength coach at Wake Forest. I'm, I'm a gym rep, buddy. I love the iron. Yep. The iron loves me. Yep. Talk it's, to it's me. A, it's, yep. a great, it's a great marriage we've had for a long time. So yep. I was going to be a strength coach. I uh, came down with all my coaches to Wake Forest after that season. was doing that, doing my internship. Needed to do that to graduate. Then we're just going to stick on with them. Yep. Um, then North Carolina is the capital for NASCAR. And, you know, I knew about NASCAR. I knew, like, who Dale Earnhardt was, knew who yeah. Jeff Gordon was. Didn't know how really badass the sport was. I just kind of thought it was cars going around in a circle. Absolutely. So Absolutely. One of the strength coaches asked me, hey, have you ever heard of pit crews? And I'm like, no, not, not really. He's like, well, they look for athletes when they're done playing. They love for them to come – you know, be on these pit crews because they figure, you know, take an athlete, teach yeah. him what he needs to know, and we're gonna have really fast pit yeah. stops. Now the pit crew, everybody, that's the guy. Those are that's the group that that does. It. <laughs> like, it, yeah, good. yeah, 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 me too. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, <laughs> yeah, yeah it sounds good on the mic. Yeah, it, it picks right. up real well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so so go ahead. So, so so he was telling you about the pit crew and and getting involved. Yep. So I got, uh, I heard about that. I hit up a couple coaches, did some tryouts, fast forward. Uh, I stuck on with RCR, chose to come here. Uh, been here since 2014. And this is my fourth year with Austin Dillon in the cup series. He drives oh, the, three, the, le the legendary three car fuck that Dale Earnhardt made famous and that his grandpa Richard made famous. That's and, awesome. Uh, now Austin's making it famous. So it's uh, yeah. really cool. I mean, that's well, great. I, I got to throw in before we get into your take here. Yeah, I got a question, too. We'll go yeah, ahead, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Mutual friend of everybody that I think has connected. Oh, baby. He knows it's coming. <laughs> Let's give it up. Our guy. The Our guy, master. Jack that Arnold, baby. Jackie give Arnold. it up. Jack, Jack Arnold, Arnold, baby. Let's hear it. Yeah, Arnold. let's hear it for Jack Whoa. Arnold, baby. You're not going to find a guy with more energy no. than Jack Arnold. And no. Jack Arnold, to me, is a guy – if you know, you know. He's like such yeah. a. If you know Jack Arnold, you, you know you Jack know Arnold. Jack there, Arnold. There is yeah. no better explanation for Jack Arnold. He is an if you know, you know guy. With yes, yeah. it's like a Jack Arnold community. You know what I mean? Yes. Like yeah. you know, you know, the community revolves around shoulder. Jack. Yeah. And, yeah, and and to watch you on your Instagram and to watch Jack. I mean, you guys are eating quality steaks. It seems uh, like almost every day. And another thing you brought into the mix are these caviar bites that he's promoting. I've been saying them. Do, I've been saying them. Do you, I, as you? I just had caviar for one of the first times last week, I get the hype. I mean, it's such a rare thing, but I get the hype. But to watch what you guys are doing with the steak every day, now the caviar, very fun to watch, Mr. Swan. Hey, hey, I appreciate that. And it is, uh, it is great eating like a king with Jack. He actually just introduced me to the caviar. I, uh, Mm -hmm. never knew about it never knew what it tasted like and then here he comes he says yeah you know we got these caviar i'm like what the fuck's caviar he said you know it's, it's fish eggs and it's great it's buttery salty it's delicious <laughs> and i'm like all right well you, you never steered me wrong before you put food in my mouth all the time that's amazing so why not another thing yeah. and now nikki meets caviar is the official snack of nascar there, now we we, we've <laughs> seen the commercial. It used to be Big Red with with Talladega Nights. Now it's caviar yeah. from Jack Arnold <laughs> and Paul Swamp. That's what We're it is. Evolving. Now, we are evolving. We are now before evolving. before we get into, I I'm dying to know what you got to bring to the table. But I got to ask you one question: Like you ever, you ever like the tire ever slip out of your fucking hand when you're running? Like you ever, buddy? We got guys getting hit by cars on pit road. Really? Yeah, you're getting guys are getting picked off left and right. Really? So, so yeah. dropping a tire is the least of your worry. Well, hey, you drop a tire, okay, that's that's bad. But uh, you know, you're trying to dodge traffic. We're basically playing human frogger here. That's on. Um, now, what's that? What's a practice like? Like you guys just do that's the same true. thing yeah. over and over again? Yeah, How so do you we, warm uh, up? We come, we come in, we 
call it, we practice three days a week. We work out, we watch film. It's just like any, any professional sport. We do all the breakdowns yeah, yeah, and stops, yeah. all the little intricacies of the stops. We break them down. We see our numbers. We stack them up against our other teams. See who's doing the best, see who's doing wow. the worst. And wow. uh, practice, we got a indoor facility that we call the dungeon, no AC. So in oh, summer, I love summer it. months, I love it gets it. nice and toasty down I there. I love it. Yeah, you got, you got to. Come yeah. in a sweatshirt, get a practice in, oh. get a workout in. Oh, unbelievable. All right. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to bombard you with NASCAR questions. No, I love it. And no, I, but, but, but I, I, I'd rather just FaceTime in and, and pick your brain for two hours. I want to know, we want to know what you got going on for the pantry. We want to know what you got. Welcome we to the know, pantry, hear Mr. Take. Swan. Welcome to the, to the pantry, pantry, Mr. Swan. I, I love it. I am, again, I'm honored to be with two Italian stallions who love food, who love a good time, who just love the bullshit. I mean, oh, I love 100%. What, what's better? Who's got it better? No, no. Uh, well, I will tell you what, Jack Arnold probably eating the caviar every day. That, <laughs> that, that's caviar probably what, probably that, out that, on the e-foil. Yeah. Right? If we're being or, or honest, out on the e-foil, if we're shredding, being honest, shredding the gnar on the e-foil with the lithium battery, eating <laughs> some caviar. <laughs> but Benny the it. Jet, our our producer, here comes Mr. Swan. Can we get a, a drum roll, please? Here for the Paul Swan take. Roll it here we on go. down. Roll it up, Mr. Swan. The floor is yours. All right, so. I don't know how you guys are, but this is how I am. Whenever I'm excited to go to a restaurant, okay? You know, you get, you, you're going to this great place. You've been looking forward to it all week. I got to pull the menu up. Anywhere I go, I pull the menu up. Wow, good I move. make sure I check out the menu before we go. Because I'm not one of those guys who gets to the restaurant and likes to, you know, sit down, you know, all right. Ab- absolutely, with the, absolutely. With a big group of people, everybody's absolutely. looking. You know nobody's going to know what they want. So you get there, you sit down, you don't get your apps for about an hour and a half because nobody knows what they want. Amen. Yep. And so I come prepared, man. Any restaurant I go to, and I even got my team onto it now. So now, you're – go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. Is, oh, yep. is, is the pre-menu – is the pre-menu uh, – the pre-dinner look, like when you go to take a look at the menu, is that to get a feel – for what you're going to be getting, exactly or do you what I was already say. know? Yeah, do you already know what you're going to be getting when walking in, or you just want to get a feel of what you're so working with that it, night? It's a great, great question right there. It's a, it's a little bit of both. I like to get a feel, but then like if I see something, I'm like, okay, boom, I'm laser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Talk to me. Yeah, there you I go. See it and I'm like, yeah, there you go. Oh, I know, I know, I want that. Like that, yeah. that app. Boom, I'm going to get that. It's going to yep. pair great with that entree. Yeah, maybe get a little dessert. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. I'm coming so, in. I'm coming in guns blazing. Yeah, a hundred percent. I wouldn't expect anything less out of out of out of somebody like you who 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 speaks the language. For me, when I look at the because I do the same thing. Yeah. I look at the menu before I go, and I but I more so do it to get a feel and for like to get a vibe at a restaurant that I'm about to walk into. Totally. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when I'm looking at the menu items, I'm fe- I can't really describe the feeling. I'm sure you guys can relate, but I start to not taste the food. That's oh, a no, no, I, yeah, yeah. That, that's a little obnoxious, but like and probably not true, but I'm starting to get like I I, I'm getting a real feel for like borderline smelling the restaurant I'm yeah, about yeah. to walk in. Your are pumping, if, baby. If I, could, if I could, if I could describe it in a in a in an action, it'd be like this. This is how I feel yes. when I'm looking at the restaurant <laughs> right. on the way there. Yeah, you're, you're getting me going. I want to go to a restaurant. Yeah, right me now. too. And, yeah, and show me, know. show me the menu. You know what Give else me it does menu. too. You can now gauge what you're gonna have for lunch. If you know that you're gonna have a hamburger at dinner, yeah. you know not to get a hamburger you, for lunch. For lunch, I'm it's saying. such a great move. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, I think that this is very important. Really, not talked about enough. The way that a menu is designed mm. to me says a lot mm-hmm. about the restaurant you're about to walk into. Yes. Yep. If they got, if they got the apps. And and if they got the apps first instead of the drinks, I think you're about to walk into a place that knows what the fuck they they got going on. That's a that's a hot take right there. If I I, I think if they prioritize and they call them appetizers, they don't call them starters. If a place calls them starters, I don't know if that's their specialty. Questionable. You know what? I trust. Yeah, I trust the appetizer ten times more they, than the starter. Than the starter. Yeah, no they, question, no, no question, question about it. Yeah. If it's calling, if it's if they call him a starter, 
I don't know if I'm going to get a starter. Oh, but yeah. I know for damn sure I'm going to get a fucking appetizer <laughs> if it's called an appetizer on the menu. Yes. Don't call it a starter because that's not no. what we're doing. It's an appetizer, okay? <laughs> Swan, let me ask you this, okay? Are you a little bit concerned if you see one of these menus with a thousand different items yeah. on it, do that you worry about the big menu? Would you prefer just to see the small menu stick to what you know best? Or is that okay to have a lot of options? Yeah, I mean, the big menu gives me anxiety because yeah, then I see too. this big menu and I'm coming in, I'm like, man, wow, that sounds good. Well, if yeah. I combo it with yeah. this now, that could be really good. Well, yeah. how about this? Maybe I'll get these two entrees and these two sides and that'll pair really well. So yeah. I'm like, it's like the damn cheesecake factory. You know, that menu's like a damn novel. Yeah, no, it's like a it's a textbook, the cheesecake yeah. menu. And it just gives me anxiety through the roof. And it's like yeah. so that's that's another reason I started looking at menus beforehand. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like a food Nazi now. I got on this damn diet and I eat like, like a bird most days. So yeah. like when yeah. I go to a restaurant, we can relate I'm, on that very well. Yes. Yeah. I'm ready to unload and yeah. I want to know what I'm going to get. Cause I'm going to get there and I'm going to be hungry. Yeah. Small menu. Love a small menu. Don't give me a lot of choices. Give yeah. me quality over quantity. Do it right. 100%. Do now let right. me also, let me, let me, let me piggyback on to that point. I think that also a, a menu that has the, the, the price of the food, but they don't put a dollar sign next to the number. Mm. I think is a high quality restaurant. Mm. If, they put, mm. if they put, if they I put, love this take, Nikki Me. If, if they if they put if they put the oh, half chicken, if they put I... the half chicken, USDA organic, dot 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 thirty eight, it's gonna be a fucking oh, good chicken. Nikki. It's gonna be a good chicken. Not oh, thirty eight dollars. It's just gonna be thirty eight. Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't need to see the dollar sign. Oh, I don't need it because I'm gonna. I, I don't need the dollar really sign. Take. Get it out. I don't that need the dollar sign. Beautiful. Yeah. Such a good yep. take. It's attention to the detail. These things, they matter. They really do. If I go in and the, and the menu ain't laminated, then I don't know what I've gotten myself into. The menu's got to be laminated. You know, something okay, else. So you're, a, you're, a, you're a lamination guy. I'm a big lamination guy. I think you got to be. I think you got to be. Are they not laminating the menus in Milwaukee? <laughs> well, if- Milwaukee, they, they do it different in the Midwest. Yeah, that's a whole different yeah. ball You judge you your restaurant on, on quality of curds. If they got good curds. Okay, okay. You know it's a good spot. So is is the curd, that's a, that's a, I never really indulged talk in, about the, curds. In, in the curds. Hey, let's talk I curds. I like to let's talk, talk about, about curds. curds a little bit, Paul. I think I like to talk. What makes a good curd? But first, what is a fucking curd? <laughs> yeah, what, please, let's start curd, with that. Yeah, yeah. The, cheese, the cheese curd. You can get them squeaky and cold. I'm sorry, <laughs> what? Which is I'm sorry. Normal, normal How can you standard. get them squeaky? Yeah, you get them squeaky, squeaky cheese. Okay. They're cold and they come in, you know, they come refrigerated. Okay. Vacuum packed, super good. They have a ton of different flavors. They got, I mean, shit, they got a hundred different flavors probably. Okay. Probably even more. And then the best way, which most pretty much, if you're a restaurant in Wisconsin, you don't have deep fried cheese curds on your app menu. Yeah, cancel. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, Yo, Swan, I'm, I'm looking at you, and all I could picture is you're wearing the Giannis jersey. I just picture Giannis Antetokounmpo, okay, walking into to a to a place in Milwaukee and ordering a nice squeaky, just nice I, I, squeaky. Yeah, curd. can I get the squeaky cheese curd? Give me the squeaky cheese. <laughs> Make them squeaky. Like, how do you like your eggs? I like them over easy. How do you like your your cheese curds? I like them squeaky. I like them squeaky. I, I like, like them squeaky. Is that is... I like them moist? I mean, there's tons. So of that's it. an actual term, squeaky. Yeah, absolutely. But but the best the, the deep fried ones aren't squeaky. Those are those are the best way to eat it. So my wife, she is hooked on cheese curds. Who is also a legend, by the way. I met her. I met her last week. Absolute legend of a human being. But go ahead. Beautiful, beautiful human being. She said the same about you, Nikki. Oh, uh, unbelievable. She's Robbie, a Robbie, Robbie, you'll meet her soon, buddy. Yeah, I want in on this. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, really yeah. Soon from her. Yeah, yeah. She, she's something. She's a 10. We were talking about this earlier. You, yep. you, there's no such thing as a 10 until you marry him. They could be yep. a 9 your whole life. And, and until you tie the knot, there's no such thing as a 10. She's well, a, ahead, a hard 10 now. I yeah. tell you, Paul, she always you know, has been. She always will be. You know what I want to do? Uh, I'm going to go to a steakhouse. I'm going to say, how do you want your steak cooked? I'm going to say squeaky. Yeah, it, just, let's steak, see. <laughs> make it squeaky. Yeah. Make it squeaky. <laughs> I love that. I think it's great. I love I, it. I love but, it. But, but yeah, so she's a... Uh, 
she's a huge cheese curd connoisseur now, and and, and I'm proud of it. I'm very proud because Good cheese curds you. are it's a staple in a Wisconsin. Good for you, Paul. I, I'm and I'm sure I'm sure it meant a lot to you to get your wife onto the cheese curd onto the cheese curd. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I think that's beautiful. absolutely. And Paul, I I actually I I want to thank you because what you did here today w- w- was very interesting. We we have never talked menus really Ever. making meats on the pantry boys, Ever. and I think and it was a phenomenal so, thing so to many come in people and talk about. Are, are so quick to go you know go right to the food where right the pantry the boys goes beyond the food. Yeah, go you beyond got, the you food. got to dig into every aspect of it. I mean, I I genuinely, I'm ah, fuck Bob. We start getting emotional again. I love the <laughs> Let it fact. Out. I love the fact that you came into this show and you said, yeah, you know what? Everyone's going to talk about food. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to talk gonna about talk food before yeah. we get in. I'm going to talk about the, the, the menu. I'm going to talk about seeing and feeling a vibe for the place yeah. I'm about to walk it's into get you ready for the food. before I get in. And Paul, you just fucking hammered it. And you, gonna, you, you came in and knocked it out of the park. I'm going to just add one more thing here, Paul, before we let you go in regards to the menu. Something that I also don't think gets talked enough is something even bigger than the menu that that could get you to where you want to be without even seeing the menu. I love sit down. Everybody gets settled in. Menus come down. I'm taking a lap around the restaurant. Ooh, See, that I'm is a long bathroom break. Just a yeah. lap around. Take me the long way to the restroom. Let me see what we're working with. That's going to tell you everything you need to know. Robbie, Robbie, I did that same exact thing Friday. Last Friday, I took my wife to a nice dinner spot. Yeah. Got up. You know, I walked. Yeah, babe, I got you know, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I get you up, know you, you ain't going to the fucking bathroom. Yeah. I got up. I walked around, took a lap by the kitchen. Kitchen was phenomenal. You could see into it. I also, another big thing, you see into the kitchen. Yep. Yep. Oh, huge oh, glare oh, into that window. Oh, huge what a dick, Swan. No, what a dick, Swan. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. can see that a cooking window you can see right the there is going to tell you everything yeah. you need to know. If, if you, first off, if you go to the, if, you, if you're gazing by that kitchen and they don't got those two white doors that swing like this <laughs> with the circle windows. <laughs> First off, you got some questions. And if you get a, t- a peek in there and there's not fucking smoke coming up in the chef's face or someone's face when you look in there, I don't know if I'm going to trust the food that's coming out onto my plate. Absolutely. They probably use dollar signs on their menu. Let me tell you <laughs> and they probably call the appetizer starters. They're fucking appetizer. You know, I'll tell you, uh, Paulie, we, we learned a lot from you today. We learned that we, we learned. We really it. did. We really learned a lot from you today. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate you. Oh, and we appreciate having you on the pantry, boys, big cat. Uh, you come honor. on anytime Absolute you want, honor. Paul. You come on anytime you want. It was it was I our honor. I appreciate you having me. You guys. Guys, stay, stay out there. Stay hungry, man. Stay, stay hungry, vigilant. Baby. Stay, stay yeah. vigilant with these menus. There we go. Go Bucks Milwaukee. I, I think so I just far. turned it. I think I just turned into a Bucks fan after today. I really hey, do. Go, let's go eat some curds. baby. Go Bucks. Let's go eat some squeaky curds. Go Bucks. Go squeaky curds. Go Bucks. Go squeaky curds. All right, boys. You're the boys, best. We Paul. love you, brother. We love, love you, me. boys. <laughs> if you want energy, you're gonna get energy. Out of I mean, swan. talk about a guy that just is always high energy, always oh, going one hundred and ten percent. But you got to appreciate that. Like you, you got, like that's why. Like when I tell you, like yeah. Well, first of all, I almost when I tell you I got emotional, I really did. Like to come into this show that talks about food and say, you Go know what, I'm you. not doing that, and go with the menu. I mean, that was amazing to me. And I, I thanked them for that because of that very reason. I mean, we just didn't see that coming. We and didn't see it coming, and, and I appreciated it so fucking much. He and is I, a gem. With how long even me and you have been friends, with how much we talk about this, I would think that we hit almost every topic. Every single topic. Every episode, there's something new. Looking into the window. Oh, the kitchen was, was fi- oh. and then what you, you said it just opens up a whole new thing. Oh, and meets you nailed it on the head with the prices of not going. seeing the dollar sign. Yeah, was, thank you. It was a good one. So it fucking one. true. Uh, but and, now it's time, meets. And now it's time for my favorite part. I say it every episode. This right here, mano e mano. That's what you say, mano e mano. 
Everybody off the court, out of the gym. Everybody get off the court. We're doing one-on-one, okay? ISO fist. We're going me and you. Welcome to the dojo, okay? We're doing we're, – we're, we're, you know the beauty about this show is I try and beat my last week's takes. Like I, yeah. try, and, I try and make sure that like this week's is going to be better than, than last week's. And this one for Shorsky is going to be better than last week's takes that I had. You're on a date, okay? Yep. You go out to eat. You, you bring a girl to a nice restaurant and maybe your favorite place. You, you, you dress to the nines. She dressed to the nines. It's your first time meeting each other, okay? Yeah. First time you're going out to eat together. You sit down. My question to you, the waitress, waiter comes over, asks what you want to eat. What is one thing that they either order one thing they don't get on the, the thing that they ordered or or like I'll do without this or that. Like, what is that one thing that is a huge red flag to you? That's like, I'm not going on a second date. Like maybe it's a food they order. Maybe it's something they take out of a food. What's that one thing that you're like, I don't think I could do this knowing that you just did that. I I love the fact that we don't know what each other are coming with oh, prior love because it, it oh, really love makes it. you think and you kind of get nervous because you yeah. want to oh, have I, some I type get of so cake. anxious. I get so anxious. Nikki I love meets. it. What it's I such an exhilarating feeling is that I am so ready for this. I am yes. so ready yes. for this. I I got my answer that I'm going to feel yes. really good about. Oh, item yes. That I don't even consider because it's like a cigar. It will sit with you for days. The smell uh, sits with you. The it just sticks with you. Uh, is none other. We may be on the same page. You want to? You want to count it off in three? No, 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 no. No, I don't want to because because I I don't I I'm probably going to agree with you, but I have a very particular thing. Okay, but I think this thing might be it because to me it's a no brainer. Okay, I am very turned off. If we sit down and she starts, a little bit of a drum roll, please, with the French onion soup. With, with the French onion soup, it is messy. It is hard to have a conversation when somebody's having <laughs> French onion soup. It is like a cigar. It's going to stick with you for hours, if not days. The cheese is all over the place. She can't focus on me. She can't look at, you. You guys can't focus because this the fucking French onion soup is just sitting there. It's a problem. The French onion and soup. it never. There has never been a bowl that can contain the broth of the I French onion. I was just onion. gonna fucking say that. That's exactly. You stick your your spoon in there, oh, and the and broth is coming over the sides. It's coming it over just... everywhere. It's going. This is what oh, the French onion soup does. You, you know what it's like to me, meats. It's like you ever see, like when somebody gets a cup of coffee and they put yeah. the the little plate under the cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, and you go to grab it. And regardless, it's there's some type of coffee on the plate on uh, the yeah, on the cup. Yeah. And especially when you go to grab the coffee, you squeeze the coffee cup a little bit to jiggle it out, <laughs> to jiggle it out of the, the holder, and, and the coffee's coming through the spout it, over the side. It never just all stays in the cup. It that never means, stays in the cup. And the same thing with the cheese. The cheese uh, the around cheese. the French onion soup. Bowl. The cheese. The French onion soup is so full of itself that it, it's got its own bowl. <laughs> They got their own bowl that, you know, the brown, it looks like you made it in a ceramics class. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, it was made out of clay. You know, it looked like it was made out of The French clay. onion soup is such a cocky fucking bastard. Such a narcissistic piece of shit food that it's got to have its own. It almost looks like Winnie the Pooh's honey sack. You know yeah. what I mean? You ever see Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> That's where the French onion soup goes. It looks like a Winnie the Pooh fucking honey honey pot. It's got and that's no the French onion. It's got no business being no. on the menu. No. And, and it's always 
blistering hot. And that fucking thing don't cool down no matter what. You could throw the French onion soup into the Arctic and, and, and the sake of the planet will, will, de- will deteriorate a few years because the ice caps are going to start to melt <laughs> when you put this French onion soup and onto it, the, into like the Arctic. It's like the bowl with the way the cheese goes around the bowl. It's like it just went through a cobweb. You know oh, what I mean? It just, it just went right through a fucking cobweb. Sticks and, and, on the side. And another uh, thing to consider me. Own spoon. Is that also it's usually got its own spoon. It's got its own spoon. The it's, only place I like a, a soup with its own spoon is a, is a Chinese restaurant when they bring out the miso soup. I yeah. love it when they bring out that. You know what I'm, t- you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, and that's like to me, yeah. And then you could really serve it, and, and you it's could, like it's wide down the yeah. middle. And another thing, like where a spoon is so signature to what you're having. I'm gonna go to fast food here. Yeah. The Wendy's Frosty. You, oh, have yes. have you have to have it. That have that well, particular pla- plastic spoon. Well, in essence, too, though, the French onion soup is so full of itself so that full of itself. So, that you you need its own spoon because stop. <laughs> it's the cockiest soup it's of all time. Co- <laughs> the French onion soup is such an arrogant piece it's of shit. <laughs> It's such a piece of it's shit. It's such a piece of shit. It's such an arrogant soup. It I really is. Show. It needs its own. I love it the needs, show. I love it. It needs its own. It needs its own fucking bowl and a spoon. You can't give it a regular spoon because when you go in, <laughs> it's seven thousand fucking degrees. So and when your tongue touches that spoon, it's gonna singe. And it's you know gonna how singe. The, the, the cheese just turns over on its the side. It goes like. <laughs> right- As soon as the second you touch it, the cheese is gone. Whoa! 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 Whoa. Whoa. And then, and then, you got, you got soup coming over the edge. Okay, you got the soup coming over the edge, and and then you take the spoon off because now you, now to stay with me, and now the broth is coming over the edge. So now we're like this. Then the spoon goes like this and weighs it. On a roller coaster, did you? Whoa. 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 And then, whoa! Oh, and also too, you know, you think about, you know, especially if it's a first date, if you've been seeing the girl for a long time, you know, that's one thing. The breath is gonna stink, so clearly, the breath, you know, you it's worry done. About yeah, yeah, you worry about hygiene. everything else. Let's let's go back to where we originally started with the question. The girl <laughs> orders this thing. And, and and it's like I'm done. I'm sorry. I can't. But, I can't know, do this. Especially a first date. You know, that's something. Maybe even if you're 20 dates in or whatever, I wouldn't even bring it out then. Yeah, but I wouldn't pull that move out. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Wow. I, uh, now, I, Meets, I, was... I I I am very curious to hear your side of that because clearly that first of all that was phenomenal. I mean oh, that no. uh, the French onion soup is 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 such an arrogant soup. And and when you when you put the thing down, it's going like this, and and then you take the spoon off, and it's just like this. Put the spoon back on. We're going this way with the cheese, okay? And and you ever you ever you ever realize too with the French onion soup, you never finish it and before the entree comes out, right? Yeah, yeah, so then yeah, you, know, so you never finish it, okay? And then by the time the entree comes out, you're not even worried about that arrogant son of a bitch fucking bowl. <laughs> OK, and then when you finish eating your meal, you look over to the to the to the bowl of, of, of French onion soup and it looks like a caddy that just played 30, 36 holes and wants to go home, hasn't eaten all day. You know what I mean? Just it looks it's, so disheveled. The cheese right. is all no, gross. No, you're right. No French onion soup has ever been finished no by the time ever, the entree. Yeah, gets no one's ever, ever taken ever out done. the French onion soup before the entrees come. It just hasn't. It's never happened. Oh, oh, fuck. Well, for okay, me, beats. for me, Whew. if I go out to, t- to dinner with a girl and the waiter comes over, waitress comes over, she says, I'll take the cheeseburger, but with no cheese. I'm like, I'm like, what? Yeah, that's a big no, no in my if you're going to yeah. order a hamburger. You got to me, get the cheese. On you got to get like. 
And you know, another thing that, that we're starting to see a lot of, cause you got a lot of gluten free people out yeah. there. See, is, I don't mind that as much. It's the cheese that it's, it's, that it's let me get a hamburger. Like yeah. what to me, I think a hamburger is it's just a it's it shouldn't even be an option. Not at a barbecue. It should if you're gonna have a burger, unless you're dairy free and unless you're allergic to to dairy or something like that. Obviously, no shit, don't get cheese. But I'm saying if you're perfectly okay with eating cheese and you get a hamburger. To me, I'm just like, how can you do that? Yeah, to me, it's kind of like what we were talking about a little bit was even Caesar salads. It's like, why not have the crouton? Why not? You know what I why mean? Like, not? there's just nothing the about cheese. the cheese that's gonna make it, you know, worse. It, it, not, just get the fucking cheese. Oh yeah, I'll just have a hamburger with ketchup. Oh, okay, yeah. check please. Do me a favor. Now, Bring over but the check. just as far as toppings go, you are okay, right, with just going ketchup, like a, a cheeseburger on there. But you're okay yeah. with just a te- ketchup topping, right? You have no issue. Oh with yeah, that. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. agree, though. It, it's like, why not? Like, why yeah. did you not yeah, have? Why not? Like, I, what, I totally what, why would you not put cheese? To me, it just it for me it raises a ton of questions about you. Like, why don't, why? You know what I mean? Like, you don't yep. you don't like to have fun? Like, wh- why not a cheese? Yeah. But I tell you, on the flip side, on the flip side of this, you go, she orders a burger. She says, let me get a cheese. The, the waitress or waiter says, what kind of cheese? And she says something other than like American or cheddar. She says something like a pepper jack or a Swiss. I'm like, now we're talking. Oh, hey, okay. Because no. I was gonna say I'm okay with that. No, I, I, I love I have, it. Oh, I love it. I mean, I that respect- to me, that to me, that tells me that you've been experienced with yeah. the burger. You, you, you're a foodie. You know what you're doing. To even say something like pepper jack cheese, I think is genius. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Also, too, like when you think about and and you said you had no issue with the I, I get it. Like the the no bun, okay, because that's like yeah, more no normal. Bun, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good for you. Good. For what you. I wonder about is, you know, because my old girlfriend had a, um, she had a gluten allergy, so she didn't eat gluten, fine, no problem. But I also wonder about, like, when, I feel like gluten didn't really come about. Like, we didn't know what gluten was till like, five, ten was. years ago. Yeah, and now I feel like everyone's gluten-free. Yeah, like nobody was talking coming... about, where did gluten come from? No one, no one knew about gluten. No one really, it was never in conversation. And never. now everyone you come in contact with, either is gluten-free or knows somebody who's gluten-free. But gluten's been around this whole time. We're just now starting to say, you know what? I don't like it anymore. I'm not going to eat it. But I will say, those that do have the gluten allergy, I mean, it really stirs, ruffles some feathers in the stomach. Like, it, yeah. it really it really causes some problems. Me. It's just, to me, I, I truly don't feel like we really, like 10 years ago, Nobody was Never talking about gluten. And to nah. me, another thing that really came onto the scene like 10 years ago and came on hard like an avalanche. And maybe I'm wrong about this. And you could tell me if so. Uh, I feel like guacamole didn't come in uh, as hard into the scene as it did. It's like 10 years ago. Not many people are doing it. Am I wrong there? You see, I'm going to use my age in defense for this one. Yeah. 10 uh, years ago. Yeah. Fair. Ten years ago, I was I was eating Dunkaroos and and drinking Danimals yogurts for snacks. Stay right there. No, no, you don't. No, you don't, Bob. No, you don't. Don't tell me, Bob. You're twenty eight fucking years old, Bob. Bob, you're twenty eight fucking years old. You got a Danimals in your fridge, Bob. <laughs> Meats, Bob. Meats. They just <laughs> I mean, meats. It's the smoothie version, so it makes me seem a little bit older. It's it is that, okay. Well, at least it's a smoothie version. Yeah, it makes me feel a little bit better. You're telling me I you go it. to the fuck. You telling me you go to the rest. You go to a supermarket, and you go and you put the animals on the thing. Oh, do you have kids? No, no, just me, just me. <laughs> That is well. Props to you. I just, I, I'm not surprised. I'm really not. I'm really not. 28 fucking years old. The guy's got Danimals in his fridge. And the girl that I'm giving a hard time about ordering the French onion soup can counter to me and say, Yeah, at least I don't have Danimals yeah, in my we- fridge. <laughs> yeah, at least I'm not seven fucking years old and have Danimals yeah. in my fridge. 
But to be honest, what, what, what else are you going to put in there? A Voss water? Go ahead. <laughs> put the animals in there. Okay. Meats. You're on the hot seat now. And, and these are one of these things where I feel like this question is very geared to you. I feel like you will have it off the cuff. However, if you All don't, right. that's fine. I can take it. It's going to make you think. I love that I don't know what's coming. It's the like, best. I love it. I it, love it. In, in all honesty, full transparency, the first few times we did it on the live, we knew what we were going to say. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Oh, of course. And then we changed it. And then the podcast. We said, yeah, to hell with that. Yes. And it's the yeah. same format. Like, gen, genuinely have no clue what's coming. You ready? Neither have we had the few the, the episodes prior. Yeah, hit me. Are you ready? Yeah. Smoothie's hitting real good right now, by the way. The animals got the juices flowing. <laughs> All right, you ready for your meats? Yeah, hit me. There are certain foods that, regardless of how cooked, there's better ones and, and worse ones. It's still good. And the prime example that I'm going to give is a slice of pizza. There's better slices of pizza than others, but even if it's a bad slice of pizza, you're still going to eat it because just that item Absolutely. is just so good regardless. Any kind of pizza is good. Absolutely. Any kind of pizza is good. Any pizza. Better ones than others, of course. Yes. You're always going to eat it. Always. With that being said, Nikki Meats, you can't you can't put pizza because I think pizza is an obvious one. What I would like from you mm-hmm. is two items that regardless of who cooks them, how they're cooked, microwave, oven, doesn't matter. What are two items, Nikki Meats, that withstand any cook, any chef? It's mm-hmm. always going to be good regardless. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I can start off if you need a minute. I can start off if you need a minute. I can really get you cooking here. You seem like you you have you you want to give your answer first. So I'm going to let you I'm going to let you do it. Okay. Unless, by the way, we don't mind silence on the pantry, boys. If you want to take time, take Jet, time. Jet, do us a favor. Run the intro for 15 seconds, all right? Yeah, Jet, Jet, give us a 15 second. Give us a run 15, the intro. Yeah, run the intro. <laughs> Nikki Meats. Do, 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 do. Take some time. Jet. Run the intro. Run the intro one more time, Jeff. Run the intro one more time. Run the intro one more time, Jeff. I have one. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with one right now. Nikki Meats, you're on. And then I'll ask you your opinion. Okay. Regardless of how it's cooked. Okay, you you can microwave it. I feel a cold want. take coming on, Meats. I feel you always make that face when you're is about there, to give a cold is there, take. Is there a breeze coming through? There might be. There's a storm coming through, not there a might breeze. Be. Yeah. <laughs> I can eat a chicken wing. Oh, okay. oh, oh, okay, oh. good, okay, 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 yeah. okay, good, oh, okay, oh, God, I was so, <laughs> I was so nervous, I could eat a chicken wing, whether it was fucking battered in, 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 in flour, whether it was grilled, whether it was microwave, whether it was a Tyson nugget, you throw in the microwave, whether it's a fucking, you put it in a toaster oven, no matter what, I'll eat a chicken wing 99.9% of the time, I, I came back at 2 a.m. last week, and there was a 17-hour cold chicken wing sitting in a Tupperware, and I took that thing, and I munched on it like it was hot off of the press. And I Very loved good. every second of it. Very good. Recovery. Every second of and, it. And, you know, the beauty of the, the chicken wings is not all the times it has to even be that fried. Like, sometimes you can no, have it there. No, not at all. It's lightly fried. Even just the regular chicken wings, you could sometimes, fry them. I like a I like a chicken wing that's grilled and like charred on the grill. Yeah, with a yeah. nice char. I can't with take the good. You, I can't with take the good sauce, a, and it doesn't have to be drinking the animal. I can't take you seriously drinking. <laughs> drinking yeah, the it's animal. it's it's got to be hard to talk chicken it, wings it, while it, I'm drinking. It, it, it. It's hard to talk chicken wings when I got when I got you drinking the animal in between takes. But <laughs> I think the chicken wing, and sometimes 
I even prefer like a shitty chicken wing. Like I think like, yeah, you know, a peep, like a slice of pizza. That's kind of shitty. I was just going to say, I don't mind the shitty slice of pizza. I don't mind pizza the shitty slice at like, all. For, for whatever reason, I'll, I'll fucking go nuts on, on a, on a shitty slice of pizza. That's just gross. Like I love it. And same thing with a wing. It doesn't have to be the crispiest wing. It could be just like what, like a shitty ass chicken wing that's been sitting out for, for three, four hours, I'll pick it up. I'll eat it like it's nothing, and I'll, I'll, I'll clean that wing up. Meats, I, I saw the weight of the world come off your shoulders when I gave you that thumbs up because oh, you, God, it, so it was, nervous. it was getting scary. But no, I think it's a great take. I think okay, it's a great God. take. Thank God. Yeah, thank um, God. Now, do you have number two? <sighs> yeah, I think I do, Bob. Oh, see, this could be the one. This could be the one. And this might be the one. Okay. I'm just going to come out and say it, okay? I'm just going to say <laughs> It's a breakfast item, okay? I know where you're going. I don't think you do. Scrambled egg. No. Okay. That's too simple. Think bigger. Think more extravagant. See, I was going to say pancake, but pancake no. isn't extravagant. Think, uh... Think out of the ordinary. Not avocado toast. No, no. Think European. I'm going to say in five seconds. You don't have it? I don't got it. I could eat an Eggs Benedict, okay? Yeah. I can eat it cold, yeah. and, it's, and 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 trust me, if you if you like eggs Benedict, okay, and you're you're a true eggs Benedict fan, I'll eat that ice cold. I yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know care too who many. makes it. I don't. I don't care where it's from. If there's an eggs Benedict sitting right in front of me, and it was made by the shittiest chef in the United States, I'd still eat it because I love X Benedict that much. And of course, there's better ones out there than others. Of but course. I don't think there's a whole lot of people out there that have had a real bad, bad X Benedict, X Benedict uh, uh, display. And it seems like a tough thing to make, by the way. It, yeah, yeah. The, the hollandaise sauce tough. is a force to be reckoned with. I feel, yeah. I feel like it's a very hard thing to make a good hollandaise sauce, and. Is it eggs Benedict or is it eggs Benedict? I would like to think t because we'd make a couple I, jokes about t because if it was Benedict, it would probably there. You definitely hear someone make a dumb joke, like the same yeah. person, the same person on like on like your cousin's fiftieth uh, birthday that says, "Are you one? Are you two? And tries yeah, to like, play that yeah. thing. They'd probably no, say Bened something about it's Benedict. It's, it's Benedict, Benedict yeah. for sure. It, it, and yeah, it's a good take. I I loved the the chicken wing for yeah, sure. I think, I think eggs Benedict's a very light take. It's not not many people might understand. Yeah, it, but, but a good but, but a good one. I mean, it's a I good, had to think outside the box. You know, it's a good item. It's, yeah, it's it, a good item. It's a very good item across the board. Um, I'm gonna hit you with two here, Nikki Meats. Um, okay. the first one that I'm gonna hit that I don't think has ever been bad ever, and I didn't want to overthink it. Was the French fry? I mean, who's had a bad French see, fry? I had. I see. I was gonna say French fry. Who? I was who gonna say there, French has fry. Has there ever been whether no, it's frozen no, or a Rita one? No. Whether I don't care what kind of French fries. And even like, there's you'll get people who say, "Oh, the French fries aren't good," but the, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna pick every now and then at the French fry, yep. no matter what. Every a great time. French fry, you clean the whole thing. A Every good French fry, you probably still clean the whole thing. A bad French fry, I don't think exists. But if someone says they're not good, you're still gonna pick, even if they're soggy. You're still gonna pick at the French fry. I don't think there's a even like a fast food place out there that people say, "Oh, they have bad fries." Besides, no. you know what takes a lot of heat for their French fries? And I think, is it is it Wendy's? No, see, I like Wendy's. I I, I think I do. Wendy's is good. Yeah, I don't mind. It's not. A, it's, I don't think it's a top three. It's not a top three fry. But it's, I think it's a good fry. But what I was going to say that takes a lot of heat for their fries, and I get it, is in and out Have you had In-N-Out? I'm not a fan of In-N-Out. 
Okay. I'm not. I, I think I think the hype, and it I feel like it. I, feel I was like just gonna it, say the that. Hype, I think the hype kills it because. I think everybody, when they go to the West Coast, like I'm from the East Coast, when you go to the West Coast, everyone says, you got to go to in and out I think you get so worked up over the fact yes. that I got to go to in and out This is going to be the best burger I've ever had, that you're always going to be To where if it wasn't hyped up that much, you could go through that drive through and be like, wow, this is a great hamburger. Yes, like, this is, yes, But But yes. it is so outrageously hyped. Yes. From even just going up, first off, you got to be on the West Coast, then you get uh, on to the West Coast, then you got to wait in the line. The yeah, line and, is yeah, ridiculous. Yes. But, but go ahead, go ahead. So, yeah, I, 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 I just I think the hype totally, totally kills a lot of that, people like, within and out. If they had the in and out, if there was in and out on the East Coast, I don't think it would be such a big thing to go to in and out. It, would, it wouldn't be a I big agree. thing. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? And, and But shout out to the in and out marketing scheme and the team over there because it is an experience. You know what I mean? Like they oh. do make it an experience. They make it uh, strictly to the West Coast. And it's an experience when you go in there. The animal fries, I just don't, they don't light me on. Like they don't light, light me up. You know, you know what I mean? I'll say, Meats? I, I've been on the West Coast now three and a half years, and I got an in and out right next to me, okay? And I like it. I think it's very good. However, the, the very problem I have, though, being on the West Coast is that it is an experience every single time. You can't go through that drive through and be out of there. Anymore. You yeah. can't be out there in 10, 15 minutes. It, yeah. The lines are insane. They're, I, 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 yep. And yep. So I think I, it takes it away from me, from me, yeah, too. And, and by the time you get to the bird, you're just like, all right. Like, like when I, when I bit into it, okay. All right. Yes, you know, I, I will disagree. I actually think the hamburger is very good. I think I the hamburger is very good. Hamburger. I don't think it's a bad hamburger. It's just, it's exactly what you said to, it, it's an experience. But if you live out on the West Coast, you don't want an experience. You know, when that's you go what through I'm saying. You just want to go get to get angry. your burger and that's it. And I totally. think if they had them spread out throughout the country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just took that like this, Bob. For those of <laughs> two fingers, like this. Go ahead. Those of I'm, you that don't know what's going on that aren't watching yeah. on the YouTube, I just drank my Danimals. Bob, and just I'm... Took, Bob just took a sip of the Danimals like he just finished uh, recess and, and going in for going I'm in holding for it like a toothpick, too. I and, mean, this and, thing he, is... and he's got it on with two fingers, and he's and he's and like leaning the 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 opening back into his mouth it just it you had to be there sort it's a of wild thing. episode there's a lot it is a wild episode no why we had a lot of, we had a lot of energy going on this episode i i am going to give you my second take now okay? okay i had the french fry and another thing that i didn't want to overthink that is always good some better than others but always good is what nicky meats don't tell me yet you something that's always good? Nine seconds. Okay, I got, okay. Okay, I got, okay. I got three. Okay. Whoa. I got three. That was a powerful nine yeah, seconds. Yeah, no, came came right in. Rip them out, rip them out. Chicken sandwich, burger, bacon, egg, and cheese. Thought about, thought about the hamburger play. Thought about the hamburger play. Yeah. I'm going with something that could be a side and an entree. I never get it if it has an entree, but it could be a side. Mac and cheese. Uh, it's I disagree. You disagree? I disagree. Do I disagree. You? Talk no, I do. That. No, I disagree. No, I disagree. Let's talk I'm not gonna this. let I'm not gonna let this one I'm not gonna let this one go underneath my let's my, talk. My let's talk about this. I think that mac and cheese for me is a four bite max. I think I can only get four bites of mac and cheese before I'm fucking done with it. Before I say, you know what, I'm done. I don't really want any more. And I think that it's so overdone. Like you look, you go to these some of these places that do the mac and cheese, and they and and if they were to take you through a tutorial on how they make their mac and cheese, well, first we start with one layer yeah. of macaroni, yeah. then we throw <laughs> then we throw Swiss pepper jack cheddar American and white American right on the top layer, and then we're gonna like take a, another layer of macaroni. At that point. It's a fucking <laughs> lasagna. It's not. It's not mac and cheese. Okay, hey. then we're going to take seven quarter ounces of butter and throw it into the thing, <laughs> mix that up, 
and work it like it's a result, though. OK, and we're going to keep working it because that's how you do it when you make a good mac and cheese. Then we're going to lay it right back out. Then we're going to throw another layer of macaroni. In, OK, but we're not going to use the same macaroni as the other. We're going to use a different. We're going to use elbows. OK, instead of the ear things, whatever they're called, the shells. Then we're going to take we're going to Parmesan and we're going to do take you a little tour to Italy. It's just this. Un, it's just this ridiculous. The ridiculous amount of time. Theory. A kitchen spends on making the mac and, and a mac cheese. and cheese. It's like take the macaroni, but, the butter, the cheese, but, and that's it. And I, I get the bean to stuff thing. I get that. However, that's why I will say I. There are people that do it like as an entree in the big skillet. Uh, that to me honest. is overpowering. But as a side, it's never been too overbearing. And I gotta it's always be been, honest. If you order mac and cheese as your entree. Yeah. That's another giant red flag, and it always comes in the uh, the cast iron. It never comes in. A, it never comes in a bowl like they put no. pasta in bowls. The mac and cheese is coming in a seventeen pound cast iron thing, Every like gondola, time. like this. That poor server is. They that always bring it server. out solo because yeah, they can't because hold they can't else. hold every, anything else. Because if you put your hand underneath, it's been cooking for seventeen hours. Because you got to put seventeen layers of cheese, and and they can't hold it under here. They got to hold it by this. Careful, hot. It's hot. Careful. Can I? You, you know what I do want to uh, just say as well. Like you know, I thought about the cast iron when it, we, we mentioned the French fries. F- French fries are always better instantly when it comes out of the um, help out of the w- what do you call it? Meats. Come on, the metal. Uh, uh, the basket. The basket. The basket with the paper. The basket. It's, the basket's the gotta basket have the paper with it. With the paper and why? I'm looking, I'm, I can why see it in is my it head right always now. better though? Oh, meats. Those are what? the best fries you'll ever eat. They're the best fries. The, why are or, those fries? Or if they just bring them out with like just on a fucking flat plate. Like if they just bring you French fries on a flat ass plate, yeah, I mean, yeah, with no like, like someone just took a plate and said, it's like nacho. And sent, well, I even like the tin cup too, French uh, fries. The tin, something about the aluminum. Something about the aluminum, and then and then what you do is you get you get the ones where they have the dipping sauces underneath. Oh, it's like a, oh, yeah. that's the best one. Those are the best fries I've ever had. They it got the instantly tin, makes the tin it can better can with the paper. You throw the French fries in, and you got four dipping sauces around, so you could take it. Okay, and it's kind of like an octopus. It's it, got it's, all yeah. different arms yeah. to hold sauces. Yeah, and yeah. The fries not not come like out. the French onion soup though. When you put the when you put the spoon in, and it's going like this. And 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 mind you, we're doing the impression a little bit wrong. <laughs> It doesn't it doesn't come back just like this. It comes back and it does a little <laughs> bit of that before, before it sticks. OK, it does one of these. It, it, it's coming here and then it's coming back like this. All right. I tell you, man, the, the, the things that come out of this, it, it is spectacular. It's, it's, oh, it's not spectacular. what you think about. But then as soon as it comes, it everybody ate. knows out of the basket. The fries are better. Yes, yes. Um, and and meats. I mean, that is as as good of an episode as as we could possibly. Unbelievable. Get. We're gonna head over to yeah. the voicemail, which is something new we got cooking. We don't know what to expect, uh-uh. but let me tell you, I am so excited. Did you just lick your finger from the Danimal? It is the top of the. It did you is, just? Did you just do a, 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 a? I did. I thought there was a lot more to be offered there <laughs> on that edible smoothie, so I did dip. I did. Okay. Dip. I just wanted to make sure that. <laughs> I've had a lot of props this episode. Yeah, I got a it's lot okay. going on. It's okay. There's a lot going on. We're gonna head it over to the voicemail. We're excited to see what you guys have to bring to the table. Um, thank you for joining us on another installment. We're going to get one more taken from one of you listening at home on YouTube, whatever the hell you're listening. Um, what do you say, Bob, on your, on your podcast? However you're listening, why ever you're listening. We're just happy you are indeed listening. We love you so much. We're going to head over to the voicemail. All right, folks. Now for the first time here on the pantry boys with the engagement that we get on the show, on the IG page, as promised for the very first time, Nikki Meets, we decided, as you like to say it, we unlocked the voicemail. We unlocked the voicemail. That's exactly what we did. We set up a number that we, you could call, Bob, if you wouldn't mind saying the number. For the That's going to be uh, it's going to be three, four, seven, four, seven, zero, three, eight, two, seven. That's three, four, seven, four, seven, zero, three, eight, two, seven. 
You type that number into your phone. You'll go right to a voicemail to which you can then leave your own personal take on food. We will see it. We can't promise that we'll be able to put it on the show, but it is an opportunity for you to be featured on the show. The new structure we're going to be going by is we're going to have the guests come on, give their take. We'll talk about that. I'll give a take. Then Bob will give a take. And then the voicemail will come on. And... I'm excited because I, it, at the end of the day, it's just me and you going back and forth. We have a guest come on, but to have someone, uh, a friend of the pod who listens to us weekly, come on and have their chance to give their take. We could talk about, it. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's a great way to get people involved, people more engaged. So without further ado, we're going to go with the first ever pantry boys voicemail. It's a two minute long voicemail. And Bob, I think you're going to like this one. Um, so without further ado, we're going to play the first ever Pantry Boys voicemail. Stand by. Here we go. Pantry Boys, Nikki Meats, Bobby Cantaloupe. How we doing? Big fan of the podcast, and I want to give my hot take on food today. I'm going to focus on cereal, and I'm going to focus on Cinnamon Toast Crunch, one of the best cereals around. All right, so you're. I'm going to put you into my shoes for this experience. So I'm getting up in the morning for work or school or whatever. I pour my bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I pour the cereal, then the milk. If you do it differently, you should be put in jail, okay? I do that. I'm excited. I enjoy my Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's delicious, and I'm ready to start my day with a bang. As I finish my cereal, it's just me and the cinnamony milk staring at each other in the eye. Before I go to drink the delicious milk, that kind of absorbs the the sugar and the cinnamon taste that Cinnamon Toast Crunch has, I go to scoop my spoon at the bottom of the bowl and try and get the little pieces of cinnamon sugar at the bottom. Now, I think there's nothing worse than when you do that and you get nothing and you get zip, nilch, zero. I scoop my spoon to the left, the right, try and double check. If I can get any cinnamon sugar, I'm just coming up short every time. No cinnamon sugar whatsoever. It's a tragedy. It makes me want to reconsider going to the Frosted Flakes or the Fruity Pebbles for tomorrow. And it honestly ruins my day. It kind of ruins the whole purpose of the breakfast. I mean, that that's just the cherry on top. Um, and that's my opinion on the cereal. Let me know what you guys think. And thanks for taking my call. All right. Bye-bye. Can I start us off here? Absolutely. Because what, what I like about that, which, is, which you know, it, it's such a – it's the game within the game. And when the cereal's over, it's not over. It's never – and that's the thing. It's it's not over. It's like, it's like when they would say Kobe Bryant, they would be at practice for two and a half hours, and then everybody would go into the locker it's room. It's not over. Still shooting. Kobe's still shooting free throws. It's you know so I mean? for it's not and over. some would argue that when the cereal's done, that's when the game begins. I believe it. I a hundred percent. The cereal is just like the warm up. Like that's that's like just you were getting before, started. Opposite field over the second baseman's head, sort of thing. Just pepper a few out there. Now, what I honestly will say is, I don't even like. I'm not a milk guy. You can't put milk in front of me, and I could just drink milk. I've never been a milk right. guy. Right. However, respectable. After the cereal, it the milk is a total different <laughs> liquid. It's a total different thing to where if you put yes. a cereal milk in front of me. It's unbelievable. Well, it's almost it's almost like it's almost like a dessert. Like to be honest, like it's like especially with in cinnamon a way, toast yeah. crunch. I mean, we're talking specifically cinnamon toast crunch. I think when you drink that cinnamon toast crunch milk, it's almost like like it's it's like a Nesquik, but it's it's like a cinnamony Nesquik chocolate yeah. milk. Like I don't know how else to describe it. I think it's phenomenal. But to but to his point. When 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 you don't have that opportunity, when there's no cinnamon milk to scoop, it's almost like getting a bacon, egg, and cheese with no with no ketchup. You know what I mean? Or egg, or egg to be. You quite know, with fine. how important this is. But even take it a step further with no egg. I mean, what I what I would what I would recommend, like, and I was listening as I'm listening to that, I'm trying to think. I like cinnamon toast crunch. I'm not I'm not going to put it as my top cereal. I know that. But- I knew that going in. Yeah, I will say it is one of the best cereals for that post cereal. You know, when it gets cereal milk, yeah, it absorbs. It's so great in the milk. Oh, it's so great, but not not for nothing too though. 
Frosted Flakes. I mean, that's un- that's a very underrated fourth quarter cereal. You know, meats. It's, it's been around for so it. long that I think people take it for granted. And my take on Frosted Flakes is I've always said Frosted Flakes is a second half cereal and there's second half cereals out there. It totally thrives under the milk over the milk. It's good. It's a better cereal under the milk. When those flakes are swimming under the milk, scuba diving, that's when they have, they unlock their full potential. And I'll be honest with you. Like, like for me, a first half cereal, the best first half cereal. Yeah, what's ever. the best first half cereal? I think the best first half cereal that comes to mind is the Cocoa Pebbles. I think the Cocoa Pebbles is a phenomenal, even Fruity Pebbles are a phenomenal, phenomenal first half cereal because they're so small. And when you put it in the milk and you turn it around a little bit and then you get a nice crisp bite out of the Fruity Pebbles, you know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, I do. But the only problem you have, though, is it gets dominated by the milk. By the milk. But that's why it's a first half. Honestly, fuck the first half. It might be a first quarter cereal, to be honest, because by the second quarter, it's really starting to deteriorate from the milk. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it just gets totally dominated by it. Uh, totally do- now, the 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 play that our caller could have here, w- which I would do, he didn't leave, leave his name. He should uh, just to sign up. Leave your name, okay? Leave the where, name. Tell us you, where you're from. Yeah, tell us where you're from. Give us a little information so we can shout you out. But go ahead. Yeah, and then we kind of have an idea of what demographic, yes, where yes, in the yes, world you're coming yes, from. Yes, a hundred percent. What what I would recommend is don't even bottle with, bother with the scoop, and I would just take the bowl just, and you know and, as and, if and it's right, like miso and, soup. You know, <laughs> nobody eats miso soup the full way by the spoon. You when it gets cold enough, you take it by the you just take, you just. But the problem, okay, but the problem with the miso soup now, Bob, is when you get a nice good miso soup. This is first of all, that's why I love this show. We started talking about oh, yeah. We started talking about cinnamon toast crunch this year, and now we're talking about miso soup. The thing now I the love sushi, about the, the the sushi faithful are now yeah, tuned and, in. and now and now they're like, yep, you know what I mean? Yep. I I think the the miso soup you can't you can't go for a full blown sip like that because if you get a good miso soup, there's seaweed lingering underneath. And the little chunks of tofu, you know, the little, you know, the little of chunks of tofu, they throw me for a little bit of a loop, kind of like a texture thing. I would much rather be able to pick and choose when I'm going to get a piece of tofu and when I'm going to get a piece of seaweed. If you just do that, it's all coming at you at once. I think it's too much. Yeah, and I agree. But but I always have the issue. Of, I usually will. I'm pretty quick to that seaweed. Oh, to, scoop. yeah. I'm yeah, pretty so quick you, to it. OK, well, so that's by different. the time I'm putting it down. There's probably not it, much left in a tank. It's nowhere to be found. A hundred percent. If I, you know, I do want to give my first half cereal. I would go Reese's Puffs because I just think it's got so much flavor. It's just, uh, it's such a good same, cereal. Same thing with Captain Crunch. I mean, yeah, you Captain could do Crunch a whole a, episode on cereal. That's a first half cereal. That's a see. I yes. think Fruity Captain Pebbles Cal, a first a first half cereal. I see Fruity Pebbles almost as a second half cereal in a way uh, no, because it just all. gets drenched. Oh, I don't. To be honest with you, to me that's too mushy. You know what I mean? Like if you if you're having cereal and 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 you're having like Fruity Pebbles by the second half, it's almost like you're chewing gum. Like it it makes a weird noise. The texture <laughs> the texture is no good. I to me I don't really like it as a second half cereal. And while we're on the topic, to be honest. What do you think is like a full game, 82 minutes? Great question. Not 82 oh. minutes. I don't know how many, but a full, no breaks, no timeouts. What is a complete game cereal? I have mine. You know what does very well? You know what does very well the full way through? I think we're going to say the same thing, but you go. Do you want to do it on three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. One, one, two. two. Three corn Honey pops. Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I think corn pops, not a, not an overwhelming cereal, but I find it to do well all four quarters. All four quarters, and that's fine. I agree with that, and I also would think I like thought the about nut- Cheerios. I no, seriously, no, but not a, okay, but not a regular Cheerio. A Honey Nut Cheerio has that extra layer. It's more it. firm. It's a more firm Cheerio so because they got because they got the honey nut because they have the honey. I fucking love this show because they have the honey nut 
around, yeah. like they have that glaze. And yeah, that glaze, exactly what it's it almost it's like glaze. it's the glaze. It's the glaze. And that glaze, okay, Fights is going to get hit milk. first. It's almost like it's almost like the fucking antibodies when you get a vaccine and the, <laughs> and, and the virus shows up. <laughs> and, and the antibodies... I mean, the, the Honey Nut Cheerio has antibodies all around yeah, it ready to fight the off first the, the, line of the two percent milk. It's the yeah. first line of defense is yeah. the glaze on the Honey Nut Cheerio. Now, the regular Cheerios is going to get buried. It's going to get buried because there's no glaze because <laughs> yeah, it's, nah. just, it's just a piece yeah. of it's just a piece of cereal. But the Honey Nut Cheerio almost shows up to the milk with shoulder pads on because <laughs> at a, a because of that glaze. OK, and you could even I mean, you could you could really. Take your time on the honey nut cheerio. Like oftentimes when I'm eating, when I'm eating like a, a a cereal that only is a first or second half cereal, I'm rushing. If it's a first half cereal, I'm rushing to get it done. Yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? It's true. I'm, of course. I'm like a like a caveman shoving it into my mouth with the honey nut cheerio. I mean, you could you could relax. You Which could, is you could hold it like this and just yeah, every night, and, you know, and take your time uh, with it. Of course you want a f- you know full four quarter cereal, but that's almost what's better with the second half cereal is you don't have to rush. First you half cereal rush. you're you, you yeah. know you got to pipe it down pretty fast cuz you don't yeah. want it to get too soaked. 100%. And and even with a second half cereal you almost want that you know over the first half cereal because like it's going to taste good no matter what in the first half. Yeah. But in the second half, you know it's not gonna it's not gonna completely, you know, be done for for the, for the rest of the game. You know that there's a little bit of life left in in the second half. The beauty is if you could get a a, a full game cereal, but um, you know, it, that that all depends on if you like honey nut cheerios. To me, there's no other. There really is no competition other than the honey nut cheerio for for a full game meats cereal. I'll tell you, man, I I love this show. I love it. I, I, we say it all the time. I, I love this show. And it's so genuine, too. Like, it's not it's not. And bullshit. it sounds ridiculous. Like, it, OK, first no, half cereal, it. second half cereal. But it's true. It's so true. And the listeners know that it's true. Yes. Yes. And, and yes. that's why, again, we want to hear from the listeners. I think the voicemail is going to be fantastic. fantastic. Um, speaking of fantastic, I thought Paul Swan oh, was awesome. Gosh. You want to talk about a guy that just gets it, man. He, he gets great. it. He gets he it. Was great. And uh, look, I I'm already looking forward to Wednesday, Nikki Meats. I'm already looking forward to Wednesday. We already told you we have the first ever pantry, pantry girl, girl coming on next week. We're not going to tell you who it is. You'll find out as the days go on. I got a burp coming up. Yeah, I could feel that. I could yeah, feel that. Yeah, it came out a little bit. It was a little forced. Anyways, we thank you for joining us for another installment of the Pantry Boys. We love the support. I got to be honest. I don't want to give too much away, but we are lining up some fucking dogs coming dogs. on this show. Dogs. Dogs. We'll That's see you on the next dogs. installment. Thank you for tuning in. We love you always. Leave your voicemail. Leave your food takes. Put DM the, the main page. Comment on the post. Like them all. We love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next And episode. Nikki Meats. See you at the pantry next week. See you at the pantry next week, baby. Take care, brother. Love you.